I would say Vikrant was a unique ship and uh, even though today we have bigger and more sophisticated ships I think there will never be another Vikrant Air Force is there to show the air power on land but INS Vikrant showed the country's air power at sea floating air field floating city powerful weapon you can use any of these uh, adjectives to describe Vikrant in the context of Vikrant no word fits better than pride every day I went to show and I was introduced to the pilot of Vikram. It was not the pilot part, it was the Vikram part. Vikram, in one word, mother. Mother. When the ship is at sea and the pilot has got a very small deck to land on, it's like coming on mother's arms, you know. Flying from the aircraft carrier differentiates the men from the boys. Flying from the aircraft carrier. The squadron which was based on Vikrant, that is the uh, 300 squadron. In the early 60s, it was a very rare, it was the only fighter squadron this, in this part of the whole world to fly from an aircraft carrier. Uh, so the, the crest that they chose for it was a rare breed of tiger called the white tiger. On the ship on Vikrant, the, the catapult was only 120 feet or so. You don't have a runway. Please understand, there is no runway. From zero speed, you would go to 130-40 miles per hour. Acceleration forces would drain the blood out of your head. Because you are actually thrown out of the aircraft carrier. It is after you are thrown out that you catch hold of the control column and you start flying. And coming back to land on it. You don't have a big runway to land on. You've got to pluck one of those wires, otherwise you are in the drink, you are in the sea. But now, in this excited atmosphere of a catapult takeoff and an arrestor landing, you have now superimposed the scenario of war on it. How to avoid the enemy radar. So you have to go low, you go hugging the water level, you know, go low, see the target, pull up, Drop your bombs and your rockets onto the target, pull out, and then come back to the ship and land. Therefore, all our training, you know, got evolved around an attack on Bangladesh. Uh, Chittagong and Khulna, they were pretty solid uh, anti-aircraft fire. Some bullets whizzed past the pilot's head. The windshields were shattered. They couldn't see outside. When I said about, you know, we found that there were a couple of bullet, bullet holes in the wings and this, that and the other. Um, once we were flying, we never felt it. I don't think it really mattered to, you know, the 300 squadron. Our job was to attack and we attacked. It is amazing how the ship performed with a very determined ship and equally determined air crew. So we always had that sense of pride in ourselves that we had learned to do something which was extremely difficult. You had Your flying had to be very accurate, your, your nerves had to be very strong. So that sense of pride stays with you always, even till today, I wear my squadron tie with a sense of pride. It was war. You really need to be in it to understand it. We've been told that Pakistan had declared war. They'd attacked the, our Air Force bases. A lot of uh, refugees or people displaced from Bangladesh were fl flooding India. War is not something we really look forward to. But if it had to happen, it had to happen, and we were there when it happened. Uh, the major war, according to me, was before the war. Uh, Vikrant was not operational. 
शी वॉज नॉट कम्प्लीटली बैटल वी शी हैड सीरियस प्रॉब्लम विद दी एंजन एंड मेनी पीपल फेल दैट शी शुड नॉट टेक पार्ट इन दी आर फ्लाइंग वन आवर अ मंथ वेर इज शुड बी फ्लाइंग ट्वेंटी आवर्स अ मंथ दे वॉज नथिंग राइट विद द शिप और द एयरक्राफ्ट और द पायलट्स and then we worked up and we worked up our armament we worked up our navigation we worked up everything we got the squadron together and uh, <laughs> then came the news that we actually were going to war and the ship sailed out and headed towards bangladesh finally we were taking chiragong from 70 miles 80 miles you got those bombs under your wings you got those rockets under your wings you got the control column with all the switches to drop your bombs and fire your guns chitagong we really you know blasted it then there was khulna chalna which got attacked by us again over a period of time and people became wise to the fact that we heard vikrant's name on the air with that came more accurate firing against the aircraft when you see the bullets coming at you very slowly and then suddenly you know they go past you i had bullet holes seven eight of them and which rendered the aircraft unsafe at high speeds we were also prepared okay our aircraft will get damaged we will pull the blind that means eject a parachute will open we will land anywhere and anything can happen to us the environment on vikram was of um, heavy excitement when we came back from a sortie We first went to the senior pilot or the squadron commander. When are you sending me up again? The ground crew would not go down to the mess decks to sleep. They would sleep under their own aircraft. They wanted their aircraft to fly. One thousand three hundred people on one ship, and then escort ships along with it. I have one mission, and for which we have rehearsed again and again. We wanted to make sure that we were there, serving the nation. And actually, at the end of the day, it was serving the nation, serving the country. From the stage when there were no pilots operational no aircraft available the ship itself limping we won the war and uh, vikrant played a no mean part at all a very very prominent part i had a media colleague went nose down over the over the deck made a made a made a i have felt a huge judder so i looked and i saw that my right wing was staring at me my number 3 had gone into me in the left hand turn So I told flying flying control, uh, I've had a meteor. So they said, "What?" <laughs> I remember the flying control guy. He says, "Sina, sube pia to nahi hai." I said, "Nee, nee, I'm seeing this was 1200 feet going down to 11, but as I turned, my wing fell off, and I went into a spin." At six uh, hundred and fifty feet, I ejected and got out of the aircraft. Suddenly, from a lot of noise, uh, total silence. Then I hit the water uh, with my hand on my life vest. But I hit the water, and it started getting dark. and got darker and i said hell you know i should be seeing some light it got darker and i kept going down then i realized that i'm going down instead of so i started doing my checks starting from your feet round and i realized that my hand had frozen due to the shock on my life vest so i hadn't pulled it on the roll out I found that the uh, the catapult was not operating to its full capacity. So I let the aircraft roll hoping that by the end of the 108 foot run I would get the air speed that was required which I didn't went nose down over the over the deck 
and went into the water vertically and the ship was moving forward at its maximum speed. In fact, the ship hit me as I went over and made my uh, angle of entry into the water even steeper. I knew the ship was over me. The uh, cockpit filled up with, with water. It was pretty dark inside, but I waited till I knew I had reached the correct depth. And on ejection, I came out, but as soon as I came out, I hit the bottom section of the ship. My, uh, my helmet was smashed because of the suction effect of the, of the ship. I was stuck to the ship and moving slowly back. You have big propellers at the back, but the captain of the ship, he took the right action. He went full astern on main engines. So that upset the suction effect and I was released from the, from the ship's side. The uh, Vikrant carried out extensive trials, catapult trials in Bombay. And I did the full trials of the catapult myself, prove it before anyone else did the, uh, any operations from the ship. Came ashore, doctor said, bed. I said, no, I'm fine. He said, you're not fine, you rest. So he checked me out, he said, no injury. I came down today, the next day I was down, and the day after that, up again, flying first sortie. There's something you can't uh, forget. Uh, I, I resigned because uh, uh, I felt that after having commanded a ship like Vikrant, I don't think I could ever get another appointment would, which would give me such high as this ship gave. When Naval headquarters told me that I am being appointed as a captain and the ship will be decommissioned, it came as a shocker to me. I had to bid adieu to the entire fleet, to command, to the dockyard who served the ship. Then I thought of this idea of sending out a signal to everybody who were part of Vikrant during our operational days and maintenance time. So this was a signal which I sent out on the last day, which was addressed from Vikrant to the fleet, to the CNC of the command, to the dockyard uh, admiral, and the ships which were there in the fleet at that time. And I'll read it out. In a few hours from now, I will come to rest. But in these 36 years, I think I did my best. For my fleet and the Navy, I earned great name. That's why they call me the Lady of Kulna fame. Now I'm going to bid adieu. And with all the good wishes coming from you, though I will be striking down the pennant from the main, I do hope Vikrant. Will you be back soon again? Mm -hmm.